So you're thinking about living in downtown Tampa, or you're thinking about living in downtown St. Pete, or maybe you already live here in the Tampa Bay area and you've got a very distinct opinion on whether downtown Tampa or downtown St. Pete is better, I'm gonna give you a quick rundown of some unique features or positives of each. And then I'm very interested to hear in the comments below what you think is the more prime place to live, downtown Tampa or downtown St. Pete. So starting off with downtown Tampa, first you have the Lightning there, which is quite the successful hockey team in terms of winning. And it's quite a fun game to go to, whether or not you actually care about hockey. I admittedly did not grow up with hockey. I didn't even know how it worked uh, in terms of the rules for a good long bit. But the games themselves are a lot of fun to go to. Yes, I do know how hockey works now. So that is a big plus for me that they do have hockey there. There's no hockey in St. Pete. You've also got the Tampa Riverwalk, which actually connects uh, Amelie Arena, which is the hockey arena, and wraps all the way around. And you can use it for exercising. You can use it to walk your dog, just get some sun. Um, a lot of people use it for exercise pretty much every day. You'll see a lot of people running and jogging on there. So that's a beautiful place to visit. It's nice if you're living there that you have access to that. And it does connect a bunch of things going from you know downtown, downtown towards Curtis Hickson and going up towards Armature Works. So it's also quite convenient and functional too. Speaking of Armature Works, if you've never been, it's basically a large industrial building on the river that they converted to have a very delicious restaurant in it, but the open area has a multitude of restaurants from everything from Asian to ice cream, to barbecue, to pizza, to a great bar that you can go to, to a rooftop bar, uh, Embird. And then when you go outside, they have a lot of green space, a lot of places to sit, a lot of places to hang out, bring the kids. It's a really big hangout spot in Tampa, especially in the downtown area where people bring their families. They don't just come for you know an hour and eat some food and have a drink and leave. People stay for hours, you know, just hanging out, talking. So it is a very dynamic space and it's also a pretty good spot to watch the sunset too. Now also in Tampa, similar to Armature Works, but pretty much all outside is Sparkman Wharf, where you also have a development which is full of restaurants. You've got a great variety. You've got a beer garden. It's also on the water. Great spot to spend an evening, spend an afternoon, spend a Saturday, spend a Sunday, get some food, get some drinks, and enjoy some good company with friends. Now, parks-wise in downtown Tampa, you've got Curtis Hickson Park, which is a great park. They do a lot of events there, uh, concerts, yoga in the park, stuff like that. But you could also go and just have your own little picnic there. Overall, downtown Tampa does have a lot of restaurants and bars that you can go to around there. And they also have some night cruises out of there, whether it's like a full on cruise, but also just some like night cruises that will just take you locally in the bay. And those are quite fun too. All right, now heading over to downtown St. Pete for those people who are on the St. Pete side, whether physically or in spirit, in terms of thinking St. Pete is better. Let's start off with the Rowdies, which is the local soccer team in St. Pete. Rowdies games are also a lot of fun, whether or not you'd like soccer, because there is a lot of good team spirit there. So people are quite animated during the games. The fan section of the Rowdies, they're playing the drums. They've got some guy or girl that is doing the chants and, and getting the whole crowd going. A lot of fun, and they're actually pretty good too. And it's a bit more of like a high school game, sort of, where you're closer to the field. So you get that more intimate feeling to it while it's still being a high level of play that if you do play soccer, which I did play a little bit growing up, I think you'll still appreciate the level of play they have. Now a highlight for me in downtown St. Pete is they also have multiple museums, such as the Dali. They've got the uh, Ulele collection there, which is basically blowed glass, which is quite cool. And you've also got the Museum of Fine Arts. And uh, on top of that, on Beach Drive Southeast there, there are loads of restaurants to choose. You can just kind of like pop into one, get some food, get some drinks, come out, walk down, pop into another one. So from a walkability standpoint and a beauty standpoint, downtown St. Pete has some gorgeous places to walk, really nice parks and uh, nice spots to eat too. Now right next to downtown St. Pete too, kind of connecting it, you have the waterfront there with North Shore Park. So if you're looking for that exercise, similar to the Riverwalk in Tampa, they do have that. And then they also have the pier. 
Now the pier cost a humble $93 million for them to complete that project, but it is absolutely gorgeous and it's a great spot either A, for exercising and stuff, because a lot of people do that, uh, but just take a walk. You're basically walking almost like a half mile off of the shoreline, off of downtown. So you get a great perspective and view of downtown, the skyline there. They've got a great park, uh, the Glazer Kids Park. So they've got a great park for kids. They've got uh, a lawn with that art exhibit over, over it, which they do yoga classes and stuff at. They've got a, a known beach. So there's a beach there that you can actually go to. And then there's also Pier Tiki, which is on top of the building at the end of the pier, where you've got gorgeous views looking back towards downtown St. Pete. Absolutely panoramic, great views of the water, great views of downtown. So towards the end of the day during sunset, that is an awesome place to grab a drink and a very special sight too, to see St. Pete light up there. Now downtown St. Pete does have a little bit of more of like a trendy farm to table feeling to it. In my opinion, a little less bougie than Tampa. That's just on average, that's quite a generalization, but a little less bougie. So it's sometimes a little bit less pricey too, but neither of them are necessarily cheap. Alrighty, well there is a quick list of highlights for both, but now we get to the point where you get to say what you think and which side you're on. Are you on the downtown St. Pete side? Are you on the Tampa side? Because I am very interested to hear your opinion in terms of what you see as the big pros and cons of each and which side ultimately you would prefer to live on if you had the choice. So drop that comment below. Don't be afraid to smash that like button. And as always, if you wanna learn more about living in Tampa Bay, Tampa Bay real estate, or life as a real estate team leader here in Tampa Bay, subscribe to my channel for new videos weekly, and don't hesitate to reach out, either via phone, text, email, or go check out our website as well. Until next time, this is Connor Green. Have a blessed day.